This is Andy Tune. And I was just looking over uh, another motor that I had just uh, seeded the carbons and cleaned the commutator with my new little Diamond D um, brush setter is what they call it. And uh, this is for a Model 600. It came, it came out real nice. Actually, let me show it to you here. I'm very happy with this uh, method because it's so easy and fast to do. Let's see if I can open this up here. See if we can get a, a shot inside there. Really, really comes uh, clean and uh, works works well. Um, whoops, sorry. Matter of fact, let me just run it for a moment here. I haven't serviced the rest of the motor. Um, it came to me just pulled out of a 600, Singer model 600. So it's it's still pretty uh, pretty pretty dirty and so forth. But I was just anxious to <laughs> to try my. Uh, seating the motor brushes on there Get it up here so it won't wander away from me so just by doing that it, it came out pretty good I think but um, after I had worked on this I was just going over a uh, service manual and an instruction manual for a different model and I was uh, reading the warnings about you know I, I, I had done the wet motor video recently and that came out good and I, I saw the notice here don't get oil on the motor um, and, and I thought, boy, I've heard that a lot, not only in the service manual and instruction manuals, but in other uh, readings and videos. So, of course, you know, that's like uh, throwing a, a gauntlet down. I said, well, if I got a motor wet and it survived, what would happen if I got oil on a motor? Um, could I clean that off? and would the motor still work and especially what would happen to the mm, uh, carbon motor brushes if they got oil on them so let, let's set up here and uh, I think we're going to try it so uh, uh, a few weeks back I had a email I received an email from an anti tube uh, viewer and she had an oily motor. I believe it was for a 401. And she said she'd watched a video on YouTube about servicing that machine with some spray uh, tri-flow oil. And in doing so, um, she inadvertently got oil inside the motor. And she opened it up and because uh, it, it wasn't running well and she saw what maybe could have been old oil but a lot of new oil and she she wrote to me asking like could that motor be cleaned up or rescued or saved and if so how and if not did I know where she could buy like a used motor so I I wrote her back and I said I'd, I'd never done anything uh, I never had an oily motor I'd never done it before but I'd probably try and clean it with crud cutter but I would be concerned about the motor brushes and the motor windings because the windings have some kind of a coating that almost looks like a clear varnish and there is a warning on crud cutter about varnish and then I told her a story about when I was in the Philippines and uh, our house got flooded there had three feet of water running through it and a neighbor's um, electric grinder had been underwater for about a day 
and the next day uh, I watched him take it apart and just wash it in cold water and lay it in the sun to dry it for a while and then he packed it in a plastic tub with dry rice and let it sit in there three days and he said that the rice would pull out any water left in the motor of that grinder and uh, sure enough he pulled it out and he, he brushed it all off and uh, put it back together and it worked and I didn't stand there and watch him do the whole thing so I don't know about his motor brushes in that case but uh, I mentioned this to the the viewer I, I don't want to say her name because I didn't get permission or anything maybe she'll self-identify on this video but I mentioned about rice or I'd even try kitty litter so she wrote me back later and said that that she had uh, clean uh, wiped off the oil and stuff like that as much as she could and she put it in a tub with kitty litter and left it on her patio where it's very warm outside this time of year for a few weeks and when she took it out she took a uh, um, air blower and blew off as much she could and used a little makeup brush to dust everything off and then she uh, cleaned the motor brushes with Craig Cutter and dried them and put it back together and she said the motor runs like a top it's, it's just terrific and she's so happy to have such a well running motor so uh, re remembering that and thinking about um, you know reading this thing the other day that the instruction manual about don't get oil on the motor and it was for a machine that, that has a motor more like this and, and in this motor, I would expect more of a chance to get oil because the, this is all open back here. Even though it's in the machine, it sits in the upright. And you're oiling uh, shafts and bushings up above it and, and below it. And you're, you may be oiling the feed regulator. So I would think this would be a type of motor that could get oil on it more than a 401 style, a PA motor where it's kind of enclosed but irregardless um, that's what that's what got me thinking about this so I'm going to put oil on this motor on purpose and I'm going to see what happens now I don't have the spray um, tri-flow oil but I, I do have a lot of the the drip bottle type regular oil so that's what I'm going to be using and I'm going to uh, I'm going to kind of do it well uh, before I turn it on I'm going to turn it on see if it runs at all and if it does I'm just going to keep adding a little bit more oil and see what happens and because uh, I, I really have no idea I've just never encountered this personally before or heard about it or anything but I, I guess I'm feeling a little cocky after doing my wet motor video it's like me <laughs> what the heck so I, I do have my fire extinguisher here my uh, ABC dry chemical and I've got my safety glasses let me put those on I don't know if it's going to catch fire or I, I doubt it but there is sparks in there and you know oil is flammable so let me get this other stuff out of the way here and I think I'm going to run it on slow and then I'm just going to start dripping oil right on the commutator because the brushes and commutator and windings I would think now there, there is a fan in here that helps uh, circulate air. So I don't know if the fan will pull it up or blow it out, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start trying it and see what happens. Well, I heard it, I heard it slow down. Let me 
turn up the speed a little bit. I see this I see the sparks in there. We put it on the brushes here. Can you hear it slow down? <laughs> That's interesting. Well, I put a lot of oil in here so far. Yeah, I can. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, but I can hear the. I can kind of hear the uh, carbons. Well, I call them carbons, the motor brushes rattling now and slipping around. I can, sm I can smell the warm oil now. Let's see if I tilt the motor up a little bit so it will kind of run inside there. I can sure smell the oil. You know, it's funny, sometimes when I buy a machine and first test the motor, it's got this kind of burnt, oily smell. And the smell I'm getting off of this motor now reminds me of that. But I'm, I'm kind of surprised it's still running. That's a full out speed. By my count, I put about uh, 40 or 50 drops of oil, which would probably be a lot more than if you accidentally got, uh, you know, a few drops of oil on a motor. Let me see if it'll start up and run again. Oh, come on, man. There we go. Hesitated a little. I'll be darned. What, what do you think? Isn't that something? That's another good reason to subscribe to my channel. I bet you've never seen this on YouTube before. I don't know, maybe, 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 I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot of oil. Okay, so let me unplug my rheostat there and get these leads out of here because uh, I'm glad that it didn't catch on fire or blow up or anything. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let me take these uh, contact leads off that I just rigged up to... Uh, be able to run the electricity. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to put a, just going to, yeah. See what I would be worried about here would be that the carbon, the carbon, <laughs> the motor brushes, the carbon motor brushes are going to get very soft and just get eaten up because I had, I had just cleaned this with the uh, Diamond D uh, brush setter and the commutator was all clean and I, I sprayed it out with the electronics cleaner and, and my Q-tips were coming out um, clean and white, you know. And now after doing this, of course, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a lot of the carbon coming out. So that was definitely a concern before was what would oil do on these carbons? And I figured it's making them uh, it's making them soft. But let me uh, lower this a little bit. Let's go ahead and open this up more and see uh, 
Yeah, I got a little oil coming out the other side here because I'm going to have to clean it and and so forth. But I would want to service it anyway. Mm hmm. Yeah, you can see. You can see now this was at the downside when I was putting the oil on and you could see it's quite oily. And it's quite oily in here. And I'm picking up a lot of oil from here. So let's let's see if we can pull the motor brushes out here. Hmm. Easy does it, and they they are soaked with oil. Definitely, that should be showing up on on the light. So everything, yep, everything's all oily. Now this motor wasn't under strain at all, you know, like running a machine or anything. But when I would get the oil on there, I could hear the motor go slower. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they're, they're in better shape than I thought they would be, to be honest. I thought they were going to get so soft that they would just get, get chewed up like, like crazy and wear right off. Let's pull out the other one here. Hmm. Same story, all covered and dripping with oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put these carbons aside in their own little dish here so I don't do any damage to them. And uh, let's see about taking some more of this motor apart here. Now I have I, I have a, a series about uh, restoring a motor like this and how to take it apart and how I would clean it and you know put it back put it back together and so forth. Maybe I'll put a link to that series at the end of this video if you have an interest in that but depending on what I'm gonna find here um, I wonder if my method of, of cleaning this because the viewer told me that she cleaned the carbons with a um, crud cutter and after seeing the carbons from uh, carbons, <laughs> the carbon motor brushes from my wet motor video and how well they held up, I, I'm going to try and clean these with the crud cutter too. The motor brushes from this video. Let's see, I got to kind of. See if I can pull this, pull out these contact springs here, so I can pull the two sections apart. I wonder if I can move this. Let me move that out of the way and move my move the light over here better. Okay. So I have those contact springs. Yep, there's the little two-way nut. There's the other one here. There we go. Mm -hmm.
pretty oily pretty oily stuff up here not, not too bad the commutator is oily as heck and then the oil um, it got up here on the windings a little bit, but not too bad. Mm-hmm. It did soften those uh, motor brushes, I think. But maybe some of the carbon dust in here got oil and dripped down on there, too. Let's take a look in here. The usual muck. Now, be careful with this, because I don't want to... Those springs are just soldered on these little wires. right there and I I have broken that off before and it's kind of a pain to re-solder back on there we go see how these contact springs they're just there's just a little drop of solder on the wire there now this stuff is all oily in there Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some pretty good oil in there. I mean, uh, again, it, it seems like it would be a lot more oil than you would get um, by mistakenly oiling the machine. Here's my little insulator. that would go up here when I put it back together there's my other little nut look at all the oil and carbon stuff in there Whee! That'll, that'll take some cleaning but I'm surprised the thing kept running you know all the warnings I'd read and and everything I just figured it was just gonna quit running or start smoking or you know, catch fire or something like that. Where's my little wedge? Oh, here it is. Here it is. That's when you put the two parts back together. You put a you put a wedge up here. I'll show you that when I put it back together. How about that? Hmm. Okay, so I I definitely think I'm just going to clean this with crud cutter Oof. and I'm just thinking about what solution to use because it's pretty heavy oil so let me set up I'm going to just do it at the kitchen sink I think the first thing I'm going to do is the carbons to get the oil off of those and then let them uh, air dry for a while and then I'll do all of these uh, internal parts quite interested to see what's going to happen with in there yeah <laughs> so I'll get some I'll get some brushes and my crud cutter and I'll I'll decide on what solution and I'll meet you over at my sink. All right, what I decided on, I, I eyeballed it and I have about a 25 to 30 percent solution of crud cutter cleaner and degreaser to water. And I think that'll be fine. I've used crud cutter up to 100 percent pure on gears and worm gears and very bad areas in a machine uh, it's a little bit harsh on paint when you do that so I stay away from that but I think this will be enough to get oil 
off and I'm going to start with the um, uh, motor brushes because I want to uh, get them get the oil off of them and rinse them and get them uh, drying I just give them a good dousing with that and a gentle rub and a good a good rinse here and I just have a I just have a towel set up here on the on the counter to uh, put the parts on once I've once I've cleaned them so I'm going to put the rest of the small part in this uh, strainer and give them a spray here this is the the long screws the short screws the double the double ended nut and the little uh, square tubes for the motor brushes the brush caps Let me get my brushes over here in the cleaning sink. Now, this piece is a little insulator that goes in here on the top half, like that. And it's a kind of a fragile... Uh, plastic that's fairly easy to, to break so if you do this you want to be real sure to be uh, gentle with that and I want to uh, I'm just going to scrub it gently. This is a wheel brush I bought for a dollar at the dollar store. And uh, if I don't get all of this uh, carbon staining off of here, I don't worry about it too much on this fan. I just want to, or, or this um, insulator. Don't leave this out though. Uh, one of the viewers, Matthew, he had this, uh, I think he found it cracked and stuff, and he actually uh, patched it up with glue and so forth because he did not want to leave the insulator out. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's there for a reason. And uh, if it's damaged, I would say try and try and replace it, you know. I forgot the little insulator that goes by the pins. Put that in there. Let's see how these uh, pieces, these were really oily. So I'm, I don't know if I'm going to need to brush them out or not. This uh, crud cutter cleaner and, and degreaser, if you've seen any of my cleaning videos, it works good. And this is uh, really kind of fresh oil, most of the oil on here. There's usually what I find in here is uh, not so much oil, but the, the dust from the motor brushes. And because of that fan, the dust that's been uh, pulled in. And uh, sometimes they can be yellow with nicotine from a smoker. They're right-handed. They usually put their ashtray to the right side of the machine, which is where the motor sits, and I think the fan pulls that smoke in the motor. Let's see if I can take a look and. Well, they don't smell like oil anymore. I think I I think I've got it off, so I'm just going to put it over here on the drying area. And 
and uh, now this took a lot of this took a lot of uh, oil in there and this usually has a lot of uh, the, the carbon dust from the carbon motor brushes and the fan pulls in other um, even when this is on there's a, a little whoop, goes more like more like this but there's a there's a space here a little bit of an opening and stuff does seem to get in there I'm going to be sure and get that cleaned off inside and out well I, I, I have to say that the motor ran better with oil all over it than I ever thought it would I, I really didn't think it was going to be capable of I did have a burning smell and I uh, I did have a to me the motor slowed down speed when the oil was on the commutator but it kept working and so far the so far the uh, motor brushes don't seem any worse for the wear it's kind of like when I put that other machine in water for 25 hours they, they didn't seem to suffer any damage so this is kind of a tricky lots of nooks and crannies in here to try and get the oil out of let's see how we did here I think this is kind of a Bakelite Uh, plastic but it it looks to me like it got clean so next we're going to do this part and there's definitely oil and muck and stuff in here and all around it so give it a good good soaking with this and See, I wonder if I can get this in there. Oh, good. I was hoping this would fit. Now, the, the credit cutter does say something about not to use on varnish, but that's not going to be on here that very long, and it's only a 25 to 30 percent strength, so I think we're going to be okay. Can't really get that all the way through. Just a little bit more here. This uh, covering, whatever that covering is on the coil of wires, doesn't seem to be coming off or anything. Hard to get light inside there. But it looks good. It looks good to me. Now this is going to be a little trickier because up in here is the top motor bearing. And I don't know if it's sealed or not. I'm nervous about getting crud cutter in there because it, if, if, the, if it's not sealed or not sealed anymore it could take uh, maybe any pack grease out 
inside there so I'm going to try and avoid getting a lot down in there. So I'm going to hold it like that and spray and scrub this worm gear which has got a lot of blackened varnished oil and grease on it and scrub that with a little wire brush. Anytime these gears are worm gears, when they have this old, old, dried up stuff, they can be hard to, to get completely clean. So you just have to kind of stay after it. I got some of it off here. Now, I'm going to spray my brush now and try and do the outside here again holding the motor upside down uh, hoping that the crud cutter does not get into that bearing look at that old varnished oil doesn't want to come off does it Let me get this uh, nylon scrubby sponge on here. See if I can get a little more friction to get that off. So you see they say don't get oil and stuff in here, but I know that some types of grease melt and run down in here and I think sometimes people think they want to oil this uh, bearing up in there but the oil just comes down on the motor. Because really this, this fits in the tube of the motor and there really is no reason to have any oil in there. Like that old dried up oil. I think that got that clean. So now we've got this apart. See, I'm not going to worry about that fan up in there. And this uh, brown is just, I think some of the, it's not rust, it's, it's some of the coating that they put on the wires and the wire connections and stuff. But down here and on the commutator, I got a lot of oil, so I want to spray and brush that. And then you want to protect this because you have all this weight and the shaft on this top bearing with no support on the bottom. So you don't want it to be moving around too much like that. You don't want to damage that top motor bearing. They're very hard to replace. I, I don't even, I can't even do it. But uh, John Russo at American Sewing repair I think his new company is I think he's figured out a way to do it so he's gonna try and get me a procedure and and stuff but anyway 
just protect that bearing I'm going to try and work on this top I got quite a bit but you can still see there's plenty left in there I think spraying it and soaking it there, I think that's getting it softened up. Boy, that's nasty. You know, I've even had where people put, um, oh, what's that dry lubricant? Graphite. Where they even put that in there, and then it gets mixed with oil and grease, and it just, it dries like, uh, mortar almost it's so hard this is a came two to a pack they're called detail one is kind of brass and one is stainless steel they're detail brushes they were the two for a dollar they've come in handy on gears and worm gears where the, the, a nylon brush or an old toothbrush just isn't strong enough to scrub out this old uh, dried up stuff that's been in there for years or even decades. looking much better now isn't it okay I'm going to slowly try and rinse this off Just smells like clean steel. I'm not smelling the oil. Okay, that went very well, I think. So I won't, I won't make you watch it, but I'm going to take my hair dryer now and dry all of this stuff, including the um, motor brushes. I usually use the hair dryer on uh, any airspeed, but either low or medium heat. It doesn't take high heat. Once I get them cleaned, I'll see you back at the workbench. Well, I'm I'm certainly happy with the way that crud cutter cleaned all the oil off. Uh, the carbons uh, look dry and firm. And undamaged. Uh, we'll find out when we run the motor later. Um, all of the bake-like parts, the oil came came off well. Um, up here, the shaft housing and especially the worm screw, scrubbing it with that wire brush really got it clean. But uh, even the commutator looks great and uh, dry and not oily everything before I forget I want to put this insulator back in here there's been a couple of times I, I always kind of keep this to the side because I'm afraid of it cracking and breaking it's kind of brittle so I've, a couple times I put the whole motor back together and forgot forgot to <laughs> put this back so I usually uh, put it back in here right about now so that it doesn't uh, 
get forgotten. Okay. And here we'll look at this part, the last part to look at, and the, all this coating and varnishing. You see it's kind of got a yellowish gold tint. It's, it's all still there. It doesn't look dissolved or flaked off. Uh, I, f I felt it as I was drying it. It didn't get, um, you know, tacky or, or gummy or anything like that. And uh, there we can see a shot there, nice and nice and clean inside compared compared to before with the oil and dust and little carbon powder. But there is a couple of spots here that I couldn't get to. Probably just spraying it and rinsing it was enough. But I'm just going to uh, clean them with a Q-tip here to be sure. It's my same 25-30% solution. And uh, I'm just going to get in these holes that the, that the screws go through to be sure that I get any oil out of there. Um, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't get a brush in there before, so... And spraying it probably was enough, but we did all this, so, you know, a couple more minutes with a couple of Q-tips is not going to hurt anything at all. And then uh, we get a fresh one here. And the same thing where these screws and the double double sided nuts go in there. Because when I pulled these uh, nuts out and stuff, there's quite a bit of oil on them. So we'll get that just to be sure. And uh, I don't always do this, but since I used a degreaser on this, I am going to put a little touch of grease down in this uh, motor bushing at the bottom of the bottom cover. See that little cup there? It's kind of some kind of a brass alloy. And I've never seen or heard anything on Singer about lubricating that. But I have done this in the past. And uh, this uh, TriFlow Clear Synthetic Grease has a very high temperature rating. So I, I don't think it's going to melt or anything like that. And if it does, the this is the bottom of the motor you know and, and it, it stands up in the machine like this so if it does melt I mean where is it going to go maybe someplace in the bottom but so just I'm just going to put a dab in there you have to buy some more of this grease pretty soon there we go I do this again now so that I don't I don't forget just get it down in there okay get some of this out of the way now then I can start reassembling the motor I'm anxious to try it I'm, I'm sure it's going to work uh, perfectly so how about that after all these years don't whoops don't get the sewing machine motor wet <laughs> don't get oil on the sewing machine which is you know which is good advice but still if you if you do it's certainly not going to be the end of the world as you can see now What's the best way to have been a while since I put one of these back together? I think I'm going to want to put this part together first. 
and these this is where the pins go up in there and these are the pins that go in there and then these wires with the little uh, spring clips have to go into these area because that's that's what um, that's the tension from those is what ho keeps the brush holder in place when you when you slide it in like that so I think I've kind of put one up and one down maybe and try and put this in there so that the wires will go inside and can I see them here to pull them out nope okay maybe I'll straighten them out a little bit more to get them in there be careful with those I told you because they're whoops there I got one be careful handling those because of the solder right See the other one is close by mm. right there but let's see I can just find which end that spring is on. There it is. So it kind of goes that way. And this one will go that way. So that's good enough for now. Um, and then to put these pins in their holder... When you slide this metal part into the plastic base, there's some slots just under each hole for the wires to lay in so they don't get pinched. Okay? And uh, these little, I call them tor torpedo tubes, <laughs> they have to go up in there and the four little like fins point down to go in there and the wire in the slot. So when I when I say these fins, I don't know if you'll be able to pull that out a little bit. Maybe you can you can see on what I'm going to call the bottom of that pin. It's just wrapped around and crimped on the wire here, and there's like four little tabs that stick out. And those tabs uh, face down and are what uh, kind of keep the pin in place when you stick it in. And if you get the pin off to the side or twisted, those little fins can block it from going up in the tube all the way. See, so that's how you want them to be here. Okay, and then uh, we're going to have the insulator, which we, we cleaned and degreased that too. So now I'm going to sit the motor on its base and put that insulator in there. And if you've got the if you put those pins in properly, they should lay pretty flat. So it'll be like this. And then, um, see, I think I can set this right in now. And, and you see this uh, flange that's going to cover the insulator and the pins like this. But we have to get the bottom of that motor shaft into that little cup where I put the grease in there. So just, just take your time. Usually if you line up the uh, flange 
there it'll drop down into that um, bushing down there in the bottom where we put the grease and this is the little airspace I talked about. And you can see the edge of the insulator right there. And that, that fan sits, sits up right in the top of this part. And that's where it can pull the air through right there. Ooh, wow, that's quiet. Yeah. This is really looking good. Okay, so I want to put my double-ended nuts. These are little one, two, three, six-sided. What's that hex? Um, nuts in there. They can go in either way. Uh, one end takes the long screw, and the other end takes the brush cover screw. Clever of them, huh? And it just goes in a a uh, slot right there that is also uh, made to keep that nut from turning. It's like a hex sided six sided slot too. There's a little light on it there. Okay. So Uh, let's go ahead and screw this top part into the base. Oh, except I forgot, darn it, I forgot the wedge. Man, I always forget this thing. So don't be surprised if, if you do too. This little uh, bent piece of metal. See if I can give you a better shot of it here see how it's it's bent that is a wedge between these two pieces and if you look whoa if you look um, right here you'll see a place for one side of the wedge and here between the pins on the bottom is the other side. So I guess let me take this out and stand it back up. I'm glad I found it now and not after I put everything together and then said what is this? <laughs> because that is exactly uh, what happened the first time I took a motor apart. No kidding. So, I'm getting better. I spotted it now. So we had our, um, oh, where's my insulator? Here it is. We had our little insulator. Here we put right there. So point this down a little. And then this wedge just goes in, half goes in there, and then when you slide this uh, top part in, the other half's going to go right there. Okay? And I, I think that's to help keep it from twisting. But we'll. I'm kind of in the shadowy stuff here, aren't I? Hmm. There. Looks like I'm well seated. Put the lights back up. Just trying to get a little extra light on there. So, let's see, I got my still have my two wires sticking out the end here. Well, 
Okay. So I'm going to put my I'll put the nuts back in now. And then I'm going to put the long screw in from the top into those nuts so that I don't have to keep holding this uh, together because you see, uh, yeah, see it's already happened. You see this, um, that little insulator moves. It'll slide around and, and want to move out of place and then you can't get this front part clamped together. See it here? See it sticking out? <laughs> so you have to kind of get it uh, I don't want to lose my wedge but you have to kind of get it into place and down inside there and then get your top back on over the wedge and into the bottom bushing there that looks better now if I can hold that tight enough I'm going to stick this in for the third time and then squeeze these pieces together put my I'll put my thumb on that nut so I don't push it out then I'll put the long coupling screw here in and tighten it into that nut That's not a hundred percent tight, but I want to get the other. I want to get the other one started here before I tighten that one too much. Okay. That's pretty good. How about this guy now? Is it going in properly? Because it kind of felt tight. I'll back it out a little bit. See how I'm doing there. It just feels like it's too tight. It's too hard to tighten. I don't want to strip any threads or anything. Maybe I'll just put a drop of oil on this one. And put it up here again. Okay. There we go, a backwards turn to seat it, and we'll try again. Yeah, now it feels more normal. All right. So, now we've got to get the wire clip. I wonder how's a good way to show you this. And the uh, brush holder and brush back in here. Let's see if I can move this light around. Put it in a drawer or something on my workbench. Yeah, it kind of sits 
like that if you can see that see how it sits in that little curve right there and then the brush tube is going to slide in against that spring and the tension from the spring will hold the brush holder in place so let's get a brush holder ready with a brush now with this when you put these in you'll see a slot right here and I call it the viewing slot because you can look through there and see how much uh, carbon you have left how much of the brush and we'll take either one of the brushes because they, they wear the they wear the same and I'm going to I'm going to put it uh, inside here but I want to be sure that this curvature is the same as the uh, curve of the arm of the uh, commutator it's like a real shallow C there a scoop and that's the way the commutator is I don't want to put it like that um, because then the, it, it, it won't be uh, it won't it won't be um, as smooth or flat on there right of course it's square so you'd think it would go pretty good but that's the one right there that's the angle that I want yep so I'm going to hold my brush holder with the slot up and I'm going to put the brush inside like this and now I've got to hold that spring in and slide the brush next to it and get it started there that's a pretty good picture so my brush is against the commutator now the spring is in place and I've got to work this brass brush holder um, up onto the motor brush and against that spring whoops well I'm trying to pose for the video <laughs> okay so there's my spring on the curve there's my brush angled correctly on the commutator there's my slot up facing me and let's see if I can get it on that spring okay now it's on the spring and I'm going to slide it up onto the brush gently while keeping it pushed down and next to that spring there we go you see it going on there now okay and then how far that you push this in is you you take one of the brush caps and you put it on here like like you're going to install it and then you push against that base until the brush cap is flush with the base and that's how far you push that in you don't want to push it too far because you need this um, gap between the brass and the copper you don't want your brush holder metal touching the copper metal right that's going to that's going to destroy it that's going to harm it so you don't want it in too far but you you want it in just uh, far enough so that you can put the cap on and screw it in 
I'll get my cap here. I'll slide it on. And then I will tighten the screw up and this side will be finished. Okay. Nice and flush there. And just turn this worm gear a little. You hear that brush rubbing on the commutator. So now I, I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. Give this a nice twist. Looks good. I'll set up here and we'll run it. I'm excited to do that. <laughs> All right. I got everything hooked up safely here. So I'm going to turn it on and crank it up. See how it goes. I'm very happy about that. So thanks for tuning in to, to see uh, that if you do get oil on a motor, even a lot of oil like that, and the uh, commutator and all over the brushes, it can be cleaned up and the motor can just uh, be back working before you know it. Thanks for tuning in. If you subscribe, then you get notified of all these great videos that I do. <laughs> Take care.